activity I'm going to talk about how to calculate the area of dead weight loss in a linear demand and supply graph when the market is at a price other than the equilibrium price. Before watching this video you should already be familiar with the skills of deriving demand and supply equations from the data in demand and supply schedules and graphing those equations on a demand and supply graph. You might also want to have watched the video on calculating consumer and producer surplus in the linear and demand supply model. So here on the left we have a demand and supply schedule for olives showing the range of prices from zero dollars to nine dollars and the quantities demanded and supplied of olives at those prices. From the data in this table we have derived the demand and supply equation which we see here and we are now going to plot the demand and supply curves on the graph. I'll do that now. So we've plotted our demand and supply curves on our graph and we can see from the graph that the equilibrium price of olives is $5 and the equilibrium quantity is 20,000 kilograms of olives. If we were to set our demand and supply equations equal to each other, we would find that the equilibrium price is indeed $5 and the quantity 20. It's also easy to see that from our table because at that price, quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. The purpose of this video is to figure out how to calculate the dead weight loss arising in a market when the price is something other than equilibrium. But to do so, we're first going to calculate the areas of consumer and producer surplus when the market is at equilibrium. This is a very simple calculation. It's basically the area of two triangles. As you probably already know, consumer surplus is represented by the triangle above the equilibrium price and below the demand curve. Well, producer surplus is represented by the area below equilibrium price and above the supply curve. Therefore, to find the amount of total welfare in the market, we must simply find the area of these two shapes and add them together. I'll do that now. As I've shown, the area of consumer surplus when the market is at equilibrium equals $40. The area of producer surplus is also $40, giving us a total welfare of $80. So what happens if the market falls out of equilibrium? What if the price in the market is something other than $5? How do we find the areas of consumer surplus, producer surplus, and deadweight loss when the market is in a disequilibrium? Let's look at what happens when the price of olives is at $7 rather than the equilibrium of $5. At a price of $7, it's pretty obvious that the area of consumer surplus is smaller than it is at equilibrium. Of course, higher prices mean consumers are willing and able to buy fewer olives, and those who do still buy olives enjoy less consumer surplus. So our consumer surplus is clearly smaller. Producer surplus, those who are able to sell the olives at the higher price of $7 enjoy greater producer surplus. However, there are fewer producers able to sell their olives due to the fact that the quantity demanded has fallen. So the area of consumer surplus is smaller, the area of producer surplus is greater, but the net effect on total welfare is yet to be determined. First, let's go ahead and calculate the consumer surplus of $7. This is a very easy calculation. It's just a triangle on a graph. The area of consumer surplus has decreased to only $10 at the higher price. Now let's talk about producer surplus. This is a little bit trickier to calculate because there's no simple formula for the area of a shape like that which we see here for producer surplus. So what we have to do is divide this into two more easily calculable areas. As you can see, the producer surplus at $7 is essentially a rectangle on top of a triangle. So what we need to do is find out what the price is when producers are willing and able to supply the quantity supplied of 10 indicated here on the graph. So looking over here at our supply schedule, we can see that at a price of $3, the quantity supplied is 10. This allows us to calculate the upper part of the producer's surplus on our graph. We can calculate the purple rectangle by using the numbers we have indicated here. So producer surplus is essentially in two parts. The upper part, the area is 7 minus 3 times 10 which is an area of $40. The lower part is another triangle whose area is 3 minus 1 times 10, 
divided by 2, which is $10, giving us a total producer surplus of $50. So we can see that, in fact, overall producer surplus is increased from $40 to $50 at the higher price of $7, giving us a total welfare when the market is in a disequilibrium at $7 of $10 of consumer surplus plus $50 of producer surplus, a total welfare of $60. So what about the deadweight loss? What about the welfare loss? How much worse off is this market at the price of $7 than it was at the equilibrium price of $5? Well, although some producers are better off, all consumers are worse off, and overall the market is less efficient at the higher price of $7. The dollar amount that represents the inefficiency of the market at this higher price can be found by subtracting the original total welfare from the new area of total welfare. That gives us a net effect on total welfare of negative $20, or in fact negative $20,000 since our quantities are indicated in thousands here. This represents the loss of total welfare in the market, resulting from a disequilibrium. The purpose of this video was to teach you how to calculate the area of dead weight loss in a market arising from a market being in disequilibrium. First, we calculated the amount of total welfare when the market was at its equilibrium price and quantity of $5 and 20,000 olives. Then we calculated the consumer and producer surplus when the market went into a disequilibrium at a price of $7. On our graph, we can see that the loss of total welfare is represented by these two triangles here. The upper half of this triangle represents the loss of consumer surplus. The lower half of this triangle represents the loss of producer surplus. Overall, the area of this triangle is $20,000, which we determine by subtracting the total welfare when the market was at disequilibrium from the total welfare when the market was in equilibrium. Another method you could have used to calculate the area of deadweight loss would have been simply to find the area of these two triangles. As you can see, the deadweight loss is essentially two right triangles. So another method that you might have found simpler was to calculate the area of those two right triangles and add them together to find the total amount of deadweight loss in this market. So I need to give a quick shout out to a student who won a challenge in my class. Congratulations to Theo. You are the master of the circular flow.